Over a thousand years ago in Central America, a game of Petoli would begin by the participants agreeing on the items to be gambled and evoking the god of games, Shoshipili, the god of art, beauty, dance, flowers, song, homosexuals, male prostitutes, and games. Nowadays, the sound of the setup of a board game is usually more restrained. Often, one person reads out the rules and distributes the tokens or currency, finds the dice, assembles the board. Music could be playing in the background. You'll hear drinks and snacks being prepared. Maybe some game pieces will have been lost and need replacing. Instead of Shoshipili, the invocation is now most often to Will Wheaton, the current god of board games whose YouTube videos explaining the rules and showing a game being played are massively popular, averaging well over a million views each. Every day, many board games are now set up with his friendly voice playing in the background explaining the rules and the game's story. The sound of the playing surface is a part of the experience. You can almost hear the Assyrian guard scratching out a game on a statue 3,000 years ago, which you can see in the top image. The sonic lineage of scratching out a playing surface stretches to today, with Pachisi games in India often played on stone floors. The materials used in a game inform both the play and the sound together, forming a single integral experience. Stone on stone, stone on wood, wood on plastic. These combinations each sound different and each play differently. The Kazakh minority in Mongolia play a version of Mankala called Esan Korgol, where the game pieces are goat droppings. This implies both the sound of the game and also, presumably, the sound of goats in the background around you as you play. This is equally true in modern game design. The individual sounds of Jenga blocks being stacked is a sort of narrative foreshadowing of the inevitable collapse, when each individual sound will be compressed into a single jumble as the tower is destroyed. You hear each block twice, once on the way up and once on the way down. The objects used to play on the board form their own sound identity, which can be traced back thousands of years. Complex dice, like this Roman-era 20-sided die, are ancient and can be seen within both gambling and divination frameworks. The throwing of lots is mentioned 77 times in the Bible, and though it's unclear what exact form they would have taken, the materials used would have reflected the specific socio-cultural setting. Modern dice, as random number generators, come from China and initially took a number of different forms, each having different sonic characteristics that reflect their settings. The Bruegel painting of children's games features both a small girl holding a teetotem and some women throwing goat knuckles. Dice evolved as materials evolved, turning into cards and boards, rattling converted into shuffling. This transition happened at about the same time as manuscript rolls changed into paged books, with playing cards being some of the first examples of block printing. The sound of gameplay would have therefore changed in relation to the technological and cultural changes happening at the time. But of course, cards did not replace dice. They came together, fusing into a new variety of games. The library of sound involved in a board game expanded significantly, sliding pieces up and down, tapping the movement of characters. As board games developed even further, they came to represent economic and industrial changes. The Landlord's Game, designed by Elizabeth Maggie around 1900, was meant to show the advantages of a progressive tax system, and different sounds thus came into play. Money, decisions, negotiations, arguing. These social sounds are integral to games as well and provide a wonderful glimpse into the human side of history. Le Nouveau Jeu des Cris de Paris, for example, is an 18th century game where each place is a different street crier. You can imagine that the most fun part of this game would have been the players imitating the shouts themselves. When you look at games through the lens of sound, it becomes easy to imagine the time and place and people playing them. The sound of a game can reflect the way it was used in society. A board game was found in a tomb possibly belonging to a druid in Colchester. The pieces were set up as if it was in the middle of a game. You can imagine that this would have been a quiet, contemplative game, perhaps something like chess which would suit the setting of a grave. But social sounds are often playful and games can take advantage of that with co-op gameplay. Pandemic is a popular board game which requires cooperation from everyone involved, generating discussions about strategy. It therefore has a decidedly different sonic characteristic compared to competitive games. Some game objects were conceived originally in order to avoid arguments. 
The sounds of many of the games that we play, therefore, reflect the origins of the games. The dice dome, for example, comes from dice cups, which were designed to help avoid manipulating dice rolls. So the fun sound could be seen as directly correlated to the origin of dice as a gambling tool that needed to be controlled. Another example is ute sticks, most common in and around Korea, which perform a similar function to dice. When they are thrown or dropped, different values are calculated based on how many fall face up or down. These can be traced to divination techniques like the I Ching, which people still use to try and glimpse the future. Folk games like the wonderfully named Ji Ha Whammy Diddle have social history embedded in them too. You rub the ridges on the stick and use a hidden technique to change the direction of the propeller, saying Ji and Ha as you do it. Ji and Ha come from horse commands, tracing at least back to 17th century Scotland. The language that's used in these games therefore reflecting the origins. The materials and actions in modern board games reflect contemporary society as well. Hungry Hungry Hippos is essentially a random number generator game made out of molded plastic that would have been hugely complex and expensive to build a hundred years ago. Now it's cheap, loud, brash, pointless, plasticky, and fun. The settings that we play in provide other levels of sonic characteristics as well, the environmental. This will change the perception of the sounds we create, as well as adding a level of outside sound. These sailors are playing battleship on an actual warship, drawing a nice parallel to the guards scratching aboard on the statues in Assyria, but with a vastly different sound palette reflecting the nature of modern warfare. Sound people have a chip on their shoulder when it comes to the use of sound in games. However, we don't need to. Sounds are embedded into our socio-cultural history of play, with materials, methods, and environment all having sonic characteristics that reflect the gameplay. What we hear, and the sounds that we make when we play, contain a wealth of information with many layers of meaning and depth.